again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And, and she's having a rough week. Woo! So we're just going to let it that go. Um, <laughs> oh my God, it's going to be 85 degrees out today. This is I'm like, a I guess, little, I'm a little too warm, yeah, yeah. I think. Um, I didn't realize. I, it. I'm pleasantly surprised. I, um, I did see something. I think it was in the 80s, like in 2018. So it's not that unheard of. Um, I know last October, Dan and I went kayaking, I think much later than this time because it was so warm. Um, but yeah, I'll take Indian summer anytime anybody wants to give me. I was cleaning my camper bunks. Yeah, it's... We camped last weekend. It was fine. I'm hoping to camp twice more in October, but you know, you got to watch the weather. I don't mind the cold, but I don't want to camp if it's going to be raining the whole weekend. Yeah, damp, wet isn't the it's fun just, part. Well, because yeah. then you're kind of stuck. Then you can't move around as easily and yeah. with the dogs and everything. It's just not worth it. Um, no. So prior to coming to here, I got sucked into trash world again. The trash um, talk well, is, is going talked. to start. Well, you know, and like I was, we were talking briefly before, um, cause it's not like Carla and I see each other every day. Like, but this is when we see each other. <laughs> um, so let me preface look, this whole discussion with this. I am not opposed. I am open to the idea and not opposed to the concept of privatizing trash pickup especially in certain areas or for certain purposes and so on and so forth. That being said, that's not necessarily my gripe. My gripe is, oh my God, the city's not picking up the trash. We should, you know. All right, so let's just summarize for the people who might not know. So basically what happened in the, over the past month is the city in all its wisdom just decided that they were going to stop picking up trash for 1,500 buildings, buildings, units. Not units like buildings. Not, well, buildings. Okay. No, buildings, not apartments. Oh, okay. So 1,500 properties. Properties. That's a lot. That actually. is a lot. Um, I and thought if it that was... number's not accurate, then there's another problem. We're getting bad information and nobody knows what's going on. Right. So, so, um, and they were just basically like, hey, we made this decision and oops, you now, you know, it's, it's, and I think it is actually $400 per unit. Yes. In cost. Yes. To have a privatized a year. system. Come, uh, come, for, pick for the, it up. Yeah. So basically, the reason why we're we're talking about it is this is going to result in higher rents mm -hmm. because because most uh, of these properties are rental. When you move, when you charge someone more over here, they have to charge more over here. You know, people like to call it that corporations are greedy, but no. really, what it is is it's math. You got to make the books <laughs> balance. Exactly, exactly. it's math, um, and so. I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a sort of a lot of confusion about how the the process worked, why people weren't really told about it, who should have been told, when they should have been told. So we're going to delve into that a little bit and well, and take a so look this at. Will, it, it, for those just playing catch up, because myself, I don't, I generally don't watch the Board of Mayor and all the meetings on TV on Tuesday nights. And I don't always go. Riveting and I've been really TV. busy, so I haven't really followed along. And then I'm like, oh, wait, they voted on something last night. So I looked. And um, the, I looked and I grabbed the Inklink's article because I'm like, well, hey, wait, Inklink will know. So thank you, Inklink. Yep, they're 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 on top of stuff and it's readily available. Union leader, it'll be a day like it'll be in tomorrow's newspaper. I mean, my, honestly, I don't even know how Andy does it. Andrew does it because he's everywhere. everywhere. Like if I'm somewhere, um, I'm like, dude, how yeah, are I was you at the AFP <laughs> thing last Thursday night and Andy was there. Um, so basically, on September 5th was when the board of mayor and alderman passed this. Okay. And then last night, they rescinded it. Oh. Joe Kelly made a motion to reconsider, and they did. And I think they, I think it's just tabled. It's just, okay. like, non-existent at this point. Now, that makes me wonder, though, because I'm like, okay, so wait. Keep in mind, I was a legislator in Concord. And there's a process, you know. I, say you're Joe, you're somebody, because the somebody in this case is the highway department. Somebody says to a legislator, we need to change this law. So they go to the legislature. The legislature has legislative service draft the legislation with their name on it. Representative whoever puts their name on it. They propose it. The bill gets, you know, created. They present it to a committee that deals with that subject matter. That committee votes on it. That goes to the House. I'm assuming it's a House bill. The House votes on it. If it passes there, it goes to the Senate. It gets presented to a committee. There's public hearings on both House, the House and the Senate side so that the public can chime in. Because even with 400 state legislators and 
a wealth of experience in Concord, not everybody catches how things will impact somebody, you know, that they're not thinking it through. You might be thinking, well, I don't see what the problem is. And then somebody goes, well, hold on, this is the problem. And then you go, oh. Well, also everyone is constantly trying to find a problem in pursuit of a solution right. or so, a solution in pursuit of a Also at the state problem. house, because you're changing the law, there's a bill number and you can follow along easily. I'm going to make a suggestion. I think anytime we're going to amend the, the, or, the or, city ordinance, which is basically our set of laws, basically, when we're going to amend the city ordinances, one, there should be a public, there should be at least public notice and putting it on the agenda is not public notice. There should be a public hearing. Like, why can't there be a public hearing once a month, right, for all these different subject matters? And there should be some sort of way to track it through the process without just having to be in oh, the like know. Like a GenCorp like mobile a, for well, cities I mean, if, or for towns? So that could be in really order interesting. For me to figure this out, I'm like, okay, let's but, see. But can we just pause there for yeah. two seconds? So that would be an example of using tech to actually make things better yeah. for everyone. So maybe there is a way that we could figure out where we're like, hey, let's go to the city. And I, I mean, well, I know I mean, on if our nothing side, else, we, imagine that these had. Um, what a, what a city ordinance amendment, COA, you know, 2023, and then a number, right? I would be able to search, at, if nothing else, and that gets referenced on the agendas and on the meetings and on the minutes and on everything, right? And when, in, in the ordinance, when it says amended on this day, COA 2023, right? So at least then you could search for all the relevant dates and meetings and hearings and everything pertaining to this, right? Because you can't do that. You have to kind of go, okay, let's see. They had a meeting on the 5th and the union leader says that they met, it was commi the committee on bills on second reading. That's in July. So I finally went back and I know who to ask and I know where to get answers if I can't figure it out myself. And I should be able to figure it out myself. I'm a pretty smart person and I understand how government works. Come to find out, this goes back to March. So in March, the high, because I'm like, who, who started this, right? The highway department. So no Alderman. Who and why, right? Well, they sent a letter in March to the Special Committee on Solid Waste, which Will Stewart was the chairman of, or is the chairman of. As you're aware, there's been much discussion about the cleanliness of the city, overflowing trash, and the uncleanliness of properties and alleyways, along with their contribution to issues such as road infestation. In an effort to mitigate this, the Department of Public Works, in conjunction with the Department of Planning and Community Development, which I think is kind of t attached to the mayor's office, um, recommend that the Board of Mayor and Alderman consider revisions to the current ordin ordinances. And it goes on to explain um, that we're not, you know, most cities don't pick up trash. Basically, we've been picking up trash at properties that most places don't pick up trash. Okay. So maybe there's a legitimate, this might be completely legitimate. It's not that that concerns me. It's the process that like whammo, like you don't even get a chance to chime in. But then they go on to talk about how um, they need to expand the downtown collection zone, which has seven day collection. Wow. So they get trash picked up every day, which maybe they need to. I mean, for restaurants and stuff, there is a lot right? of um, but that, but trash. Listen to what you're saying. But for restaurants, for those businesses, we need to pick up their trash every day. But for these businesses, we... we we're going to make them pick up their own, own trash. trash. <laughs> so, like, wait, I don't understand. Who's picking winners and losers, right? So they, re um, they recommend the following steps. Develop ordinance language changes and submit for board approval. Undertake comprehensive public outreach campaign directed at affected properties. Working with property owners to identify potential alternatives where required. And continued outreach and education on compliance. Okay, so that's what they said. Um, and they have these maps and all this stuff. So then they have a meeting on April 4th. So we're not talking September. We're talking five months earlier. There was a meeting of the Special Committee on Solid Waste. Alderman Stewart, um, you know, obviously brings up, they bring it forward and everything. They're talking. And I did read the actual ordinance because I heard somebody say, well, it was confusing. Mm, it's only confusing if you can't read. Um, <laughs> it was pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, just like they do at the State House, they cross out the language they want to take out. And they put the stuff in bold that they want to put in. And it says a dwelling, single family, a detached building used exclusively for occupancy by one family, large multifamily, 
a building or portion thereof containing five or more dwelling units, whether in common ownership or owned as a condominium or cooperative. And then they describe, describe lodging houses, which is like a rooming house and boarding house. So they're very clearly def saying five or more. Um, eligibility properties that are eligible for collection include any residential dwelling. Um, it's just so screwy. Properties that are ineligible, any large multifamily dwellings, lodging house, planned developments, or condominium complexes with five or more dwelling units. So I don't think that the ordinance language was confusing. I'm going to okay. say that. I've heard people say it was confusing. Now, was it buried in an 144-page <laughs> agenda for that night's meeting? And was it on the consent calendar where nobody was going to discuss oh, wow. it? Yes. But in, in back in April, when you have a small committee, and this is your job, you are the special committee on solid waste activities. Um, Ward 4 Alderman Christine Fajardo, who's in the newspaper today, or on Inkling today, stated... I will start by saying I think this is a is great and I am prepared to give it a hearty yes, but I did have a couple questions and I wanted to share an observation. So then she went on to talk about areas of that the downtown area doesn't expand into her ward, so okay. the seven day pickup. And then she goes up, talks about Dutton Street and Jane Street, which are those the diagonal streets there, um, which is already crowded with trash and cars. Um, I think that is an area that could use a similar approach. So she would like more properties. Um, more pickups? Or no, more properties, more properties to, to, have to have to have their own pickup. Their own. Okay. Um, so she said, um, so applying more private collection to multifamily bill, I believe the threshold is five. And he said, yes, the gr it's greater than four units. Like there's that language, like it's five <laughs> greater than four which is five. <laughs> so Alderman Fajardo said, so could the private collection be expanded? Now I'm not against this, but I know that multiple collections by the city during the week is challenging. Could the private collection be extended eventually? Um, I just want to advocate for that. So she would like this to go wider. Just keep that in mind. Um, so there, there's this conversation and then it kept passed on and then it goes on to you know another committee and another committee and all the committees rubber stamp it and the whole on now last night i haven't seen a whole lot but i did see the article okay um to do motion to reconsider was unanimously approved um ba -ba 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 -ba. Ward Ford Alderman Christine Fajardo apologized for her misunderstanding of the proposal as it was provided to her as a member of the BMA Special Committee on Solid Waste. Okay. She very clearly sounded like she knew exactly what they were talking about. She asked questions. She got answers. She said she would like to expand privatized pickup. Um, so that's not very... That's not completely accurate or truthful you say in april you were saying you wholeheartedly support this and you think it should be applied to more buildings but then when pushback happens from the community because i guess 50 people spoke oh, um wow. yeah um now you don't think you understood it completely and you know no so here's an idea people Vote for somebody else for Alderman in Ward 4. Um, what's his name? Mark Flanders is running over there. You have choices. You can reelect somebody who either, one, doesn't understand what she's doing because she clearly said one thing and then now says she didn't understand and it was confusing, or someone who just is lying to you, or, you know, things. Um, because this is the problem. Beyond the alderman, because I don't, you know, I don't really fault, like, Joe Lavasser was like, it was on consent, you know, like, people, it was buried in a, in a pile of agenda items. If it's on consent, you would kind of presume that along the way, everybody's crossed their, crossed their T's and dotted their I's, just like at the state house. Things go on consent. Now, I can guarantee you a controversial bill, even if it's a 10 to 0 recommendation, is not staying on the consent calendar, <laughs> because someone is going to want to make an argument for or against. So you've got aldermen who knew what this was. They were discussing it in April. You have a mayor who would like to run the state 
who didn't think it, we needed, oh, I know what I wanted to say. There was something in there um, about, when are we gonna tell people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's kind so, of important. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so if I remember correctly from this morning. Chairman, uh, yeah. this is gonna be a fairly big change and out of the norm of the state and the region. Um, what are we gonna do about talking to the people who are gonna be affected? And the highway department said, we do have a plan in place in the event that the board does not, does not, does want to move forward with our recommendation. That will include it, Nixle notifications, notices sent in the mail, and things of that nature. We can obviously figure out some more ways to communicate. I haven't communicated anything yet because nothing has been determined, but we are prepared and we have an implementation timeline that involves a lot of education to the residents and property owners. No, no um, education or outreach or in anything was done to any of these people until after the board the of mayor vote. and aldermen were given a, the vote. And uh, and that is a track That's record that we have seen yes. at the at City Hall. And actually, you know, hopefully if we get a different candidate in there, this maybe November, there'll be some more transparency and some communication with the people actually paying the bills. Yeah. So you've got Joyce Craig. Like I said, want to be governor who can't even manage things in her own city does not obviously think it's important enough to let the community know what the hell is going on before you actually implement it. So she obviously thinks she is the boss of us as opposed to we actually should be the boss of her. She works for us. It's not the other way around. Then you've got Kevin Kavanaugh who now wants to be the mayor, who's the one who said in this committee meeting that he recommended this change. He's the one who made the motion. Oh, wow. So do the guy who wants to be mayor thinks so this, we should do things is, like this. is why they're reversing it now, right? It like they didn't realize they were going to have such a stinky stink and on their so hands. it's so close to the election. So we can't and have people angry at us. Uh, so... Yeah. So, oh, wow. So 50 people testified. I so it is actually something yeah. that is irking and bringing yeah. people out. So that um, is important to know, right? Because you're making something more expensive. Yeah. You're not actually... Well, and you know, like we were saying last week, so the people, those properties, those 1,500 properties that we're going to now have to spend all this money, whether that's the right decision or not about whether it's better for the community for them to pick up their own trash or not is not the issue. But you're just lumping all of a sudden, hey, in eight weeks, you got to have this in place. So those 1,500 properties aren't going to get a reduction in their taxes. I mean, Pat Long makes a comment that like, well, my neighborhood decided to go to private tax, private pickup, and we didn't expect a discount in our taxes for less services. And I'm thinking, well, then you're an idiot. Like, how about, or you're getting paid on a union contract. <laughs> it's nuts. Ugh. It's just all nuts. So that's that's um, the trash situation. So I don't know what will happen. Um, so it's currently rescinded. So it's but then you they're going to wait till after the election. How many of these property owners went and contracted with a private company? Are they going to undo that? Like nobody thinks things through in this government. Yeah, no one. Like nobody thinks, thinks like, hey, we're going to do this. How's this going to impact people? What's it going to do? It's just like we just do it. Eh, we'll just do it. We'll just slop off the busing for the charter schools. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> eh, we don't know how those kids will get to school, but who cares? They go to the charter schools. And it's so interesting. Do, do we know what budgetary things are driving this? Why well, are they like, trying to... Well, it didn't sound like it was a budgetary thing okay. in the letter anyways. If it was, it, what there was nothing in there about cost. It was about the fact that... They there thought they have pro more pickup. Well, or... these properties, these 1,500 properties have probably more trash than can be picked up in a week. I see. Okay. And they tend to have So really the solution was can we ground. have two two pickups a week. But that would cost more money and should you and I have to pay more because those bills I mean it's a vicious circle. But then the problem is is that in a lot of these buildings because they don't have a dumpster and and maybe their landlord only bought them one trash can. You know, you can get more than one. Mm -hmm. um, there ends up with trash on the ground, and then that's where the rodent problem comes from. So I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm understanding. From what I understand, the, it would save the city $200,000 because we wouldn't be taking that solid waste to the landfill. So that's the, I don't know. It's just... You know what I, else I was thinking as I'm driving over here? Because I was like, 
they're talking in one of these letters about a shortage of employees at the highway. Okay, fine. I think I would shortage like to is see, everywhere. But I would like to see every year, if we're going to have transparency, how about this? Every department, there's a thing on the website that says, Joe, you know, highway department, of, break it down into their little subchapters, how much their budget is, how much they actually spent, how many people they employ, how many are full-time, how many are part-time, and what the cost was for those employees. And then next year, on the line below it, show me if it's changed. So if we go, cause, uh, do you remember when the union leader used to do the city salaries, salaries I seen and it, it would like, come out every 10 years I haven't years seen it so. in, I don't think, five years. But it's like, that's one little thing, but that's, you know, unless you're clever like us, you can't digest that. But I'm like, why shouldn't I be able to know if the planning and development department had two full-time employees and two part-time employees and it cost us you know three million dollars and then next year we've got seven full-time employees and you know, so that people could go well wait what happened there if yeah. the highway department in increased and things services are decreasing people would be like wait a minute i don't understand why are there why is it going up yeah, I feel like maybe there could be, there's an opportunity for some overhaul at City Hall <laughs> where, uh, you know, if you get the right person in there who is actually willing to, to grapple with some yep. of these issues and just come up with solutions. You know, technology is pretty amazing. Yep. There are probably ways that you could actually structure a form so it's simply like, oh, this is how we're going to collect data from now on that yep. just automatically puts it into these searchable databases that we could actually use and functional ways, which would make it easier mm -hmm. for everyone, yep. right? Because even all these 91A yep. stuff, well, that's what I mean. we, we have you, to file. They could tag and... things with that number and it would it would streamline some of the 91A requests. Um, side note, completely different subject matter, but I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. So in the Nextdoor app, which is turned into a site where people just post that they need food. You know, I, it's exhausting. But anyways, there is a gentleman who posted um, in my neck of the woods. This is next door. Next door, the okay. next door yep. app. And it's supposed to be for building community. So anyways, he apologized. He was embarrassed. He says he's living with his girlfriend in a 25 foot camper and he can't find a place to park because the police keep shooing him along and he's tried staying in the park and he's trying and i'm like oh i know exactly who this is because we keep <laughs> shooing him that. along yeah. um but he says that he became homeless because he lost they both lost their jobs and then they lost their apartment and i'm like but you have a 25 foot camper which is not cheap and driving it around and that is all not cheap either but i was like then so what's the story? So you lost your job, so get another job. There's like, we were joking when we went through Dunkin' Donuts the other day that had a sign, work today, get paid tomorrow. Like literally, that's how they have to keep employees coming back. We're going to pay you tomorrow so you come back tomorrow, right? So he went on to tell me, to discuss more and come to find out he's got a little boy whose mother died from an overdose, uh, from drug related, I don't know if it's... And now he's in this vicious cycle of government because they have, you know, approved um, visitation with him, which is during the daytime. And then he's got to go to uh, drug counseling, even though he wasn't the one doing the drugs. The mother was the one. They weren't even together. And then he's got to go to parenting classes and he's got to go to court dates and all stuff. So his day job doesn't, it can't. So I was like, Okay, one, that's annoying because there's the perfect example of government not doing helping, the thing, not, not caring if they're impacting this guy's livelihood. They just schedule, you know, you're just scheduled, oh just it, make it work. I mean, but then it's I'm like the, when you go to the court and yeah, they're and like, oh, it's going to be at 7 o'clock. And, and you're, you're like, oh, okay, this it's took 3 like four and, hours. Right. I've got two parking tickets yep. because like nothing works. And on the flip side of it, okay, you're in a terrible predicament that may or may not be your own thing. And you can't work your normal day job. So now guess what you have to do? You have to work nights and weekends because this is the way life works. You know, this is, I felt I have compassion for him and I felt for him. However, his long-term solution doesn't, like finding a place to park two nights in a row to park your camper because you don't have a place to live because you don't have a job is not the actual problem. 
R right, but you know, I mean, you're talking really about short-term preference versus long-term right. preference, and part of the thing, uh, certainly in, in sort of libertarian philosophy, is like trying to help people understand you got to do some long-term right. planning too, because it's not, if you're constantly just in this motion, you're never going to get ahead. You don't, yeah, you don't do you it. You know, he so. he, he needs a job. And she needs a job so that they can stop living in the twenty-five foot camp. Right, but but then of course the immediate need is, of oh course. damn, I have I need a place to put this tonight. And yeah. so you, if you're in this constant right. crisis mode, I agree. it becomes very hard to dig your way out. So I do have a lot of empathy with that. But but you still can't park in the you still can't camp in the parks or you know like you can't. I mean, to some extent, I'm like, if you're in a camper and you're, you're just clean. out, you know, at, at, in the parking lots where we did We Heart West or yeah. something overnight, is it actually fruitful right. for the police to be shooing those people on? No. Probably not. No, not right? in a parking lot. So, but so, you know, I feel like there are but places I think the problem that you could is, probably is that find. There's, he's probably not indicative of the majority of the people that are camping in the places he's parking. He's trying to find some place where he can stay without being harassed. And people are making suggestions and I'm like, okay, you're just suggesting more private property. Like that's not the solution you can't, you're like, you shouldn't be outraged that Walmart no longer lets campers. That's not the problem. It's not, Walmart's not the bad guy there. The reason they don't allow campers is it used to be as you're driving across the country and need some place to sleep overnight, you stop at Walmart because you're gonna go in and buy stuff at Walmart. It doesn't mean we're a free campground. Right. And that's right. people take advantage but, of situations. But also, Tammy, it probably is a indicate, like leading indicator of the economic collapse. Yeah. Oh, it's going right? to be a it works. Because people, you're like, oh, you used to have a house and now you're yeah. in your camper. I mean, we could call it downsizing. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> whatever. But the reality is that there is a massive economic impact. Yeah. And it's going to. And th all this free stuff is, is not, what's making yeah. everything so expensive. Yep. Gas is so up yep. again. You know, I think we're facing like some real. Stuff. Yeah, did you see the, the guy from Wells Fargo? It was like the head risk manager jump out the, jumped out oh, of that his happened, seems apartment, to happen all the time. Peter, out they, of his office all building. The, all the people in line at Bar Mark Bassett, now, granted I shop in Bedford, which is a Republican town, but the, the cashier, the bagger, the manager, the customers in front of me, the customers back of me, all of them talking about the economy and how we need to get rid of Biden. And like, it was oh. just like this whole, I was just like, where am I? <laughs> it was just, anyways, we're out of time. How's that happen? Um, check out Carla's book. And then this new book, which I don't know the name of it. Li Libertarian autobiographies moving toward freedom in today's world, both available. I'm assuming on Amazon. I believe so. I don't know about this one, but, uh, but this check might those be from out. the publisher and that's Paul Gray. I bet Matt you can Millen. go to Carla Garrick .com and get more information about that. You sure um, can. And we'll be, enjoy this weather. It's going to be rainy this weekend, but we got a nice long, some of us have a long three day weekend. Um, check out the foliage, go for a ride. If you're around New Hampshire and you're looking for something to do, go to FSP.org and check out Discover New Hampshire weekend. There's a ton of stuff going on and we'd love to see you. There you go. That's all we got. Have Bye, a great guys. weekend.